I am building my dream boat. I am looking for a boat that will have tons of fishable space, but also function well with a big family for recreation. Last year, we built this boat. It was a 1974 slick craft, but the problem was there wasn't much fishable space. Not a great family recreation boat either. And last but not least, it had an inboard motor, which meant we could not use it half the year when it got below freezing temperatures. So we took to searching the internet. We searched all over Facebook Marketplace and local classifieds trying to find the perfect boat. After weeks of searching, we determined there wasn't one. So we decided, let's build one. Hello everybody, it's been a minute since you saw my dad and I, but we have some exciting news. We woke up at 2.30 this morning and are driving to pick up a new boat. And as you can see in the distance, there's Las Vegas. We're going south of Vegas to uh, pick up a new boat. We're so excited to show you guys. And we're gonna kind of answer reasons why we're getting a new boat and all the time and energy and money we spent in building the last boat. And kind of some things that we did not love about that last boat that physically we cannot alter or change which has ultimately led us on the search for a new boat. And we found it, and we are currently two hours away from seeing it for the first time. I'm so excited to show you guys. So we will see you when we're at the new boat. All right, guys, as you can see, we got our pontoon. It's a 2007 Tracker Signature Series. And we did a lot of searching for pontoons. And something we wanted was something with a nice outboard and something that was a little bit priced low so we can customize it and have some money to do what we want. So the biggest selling factor of this whole pontoon is around here at the back. We've got a 2019 115 horsepower four stroke motor. This thing has less than 200 hours on it. It's like brand new mint conditions, still under warranty. So I'm so excited, but we are still nine hours from home. So we're gonna grease these bearings, go pick up a spare tire, and get on the road and I can't wait to tear into this thing and uh, show you guys some more of this pontoon. But for now, here's your sneak peek. about to get her up to top speed for the first time so I'll get my dad to sit down and uh, we'll throttle it up and try and get it on plane but she's been she's been running for about 10 minutes now so she should be warmed up and let's see what this thing can do okay the speedometer doesn't work so I have a speedometer app I've used in the past it's pretty accurate it uses GPS right now it says we're going five miles an hour Well, that was pretty interesting. We topped out at about 21 miles an hour, which is faster than our last boat, our slick craft went, which is pretty cool. I think adding a third tune, a little more buoyancy, uh, we should be able to maybe reach that 25, which is plenty fast for what we do. So the maiden voyage went pretty dang solid. It drove perfectly. It turns on a dime, got up to 21 miles an hour, and I feel like you could fish pretty efficiently off of this thing. But honestly, I think we can make it so much better. So here's the plans. So I think this boat has a ton of potential, but a few flaws that we have immediately seen and want to upgrade. This railing is gonna be a big problem for landing big lake trout. So our plan is we are going to have a seven foot 
by eight foot deck with zero railing. It'll be just be flush and it sits in the water about here. So we'll be about a foot, foot and a half off the water. We're gonna have two custom downrigger posts with our downriggers. We're gonna rig our fish finders onto the downrigger posts. Then we'll have two uh, helm chairs to watch our lines. We're also building a custom live well and battery box here in the back. And we're gonna be able to have it be multi-purpose, hold a couple long line rods out the back. And then we're gonna have a 13 foot section of railing. So from about here forward will be a new fence from pontoonstuff.com. We're gonna go with a black metallic and we're gonna do all new furniture. So in that front 13 feet, we're gonna maximize the seating because we do have a big family. And that's the whole reason we got a pontoon is to spend more time on the water with friends and family. So we're gonna have sectionals with lean backs in the front. And like I said, 13 feet is gonna be all seating. But we are going to make this pontoon the ultimate fishing rig. And you guys are gonna be along for every step of the way. As far as the trailer goes, I'm not in love. It is a single axle trailer. And I have had very, very bad luck with single axle trailers and burning up a bearing and being stranded. So. My dad and I, we're gonna look for a double axle trailer or look at possibly converting this to a double axle. And I honestly don't love the small tires and wheels. I kinda want something a little bit bigger, something that I'd feel more comfortable pulling it on the freeway. So let's get back to the house and see what we can come up with. Guys, we may have done something a little crazy. We are nine hours from home and we just scored a second pontoon. Let's dive into the details of why we did what we did. After spending days looking for a pontoon trailer, we came to the realization that they're expensive, new and used. So my dad and I went back to the drawing board and we thought of maybe finding an old junk pontoon with a tandem axle trailer or a tandem axle trailer conversion kit. And both of those have been expensive. But what we did find, in the exact same place we picked up the tracker, we found this beauty, a tandem axle trailer and a StarCraft 20-foot pontoon already torn down. It had the helm and a 75-horsepower Mercury on it. My dad and I then hatched a great plan. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where prior, we were going to take the fencing and furniture off of the tracker and just try and sell independently, we then thought of an idea. What if we took the StarCraft pontoon and put new decking on it and the fencing and furniture from the tracker and we're able to sell this with the tracker trailer under it and take the tandem axle trailer under the tracker and recoup a little bit of money that we've put into the tracker. So that's exactly what we've done. We drove nine and a half hours one way to pick up this tandem axle trailer, this 20 foot StarCraft pontoon with a 75 horse Mercury. What we've done up to this point is we have taken the helm off of it, we have taken the motor off, and we have now extended the deck back 14 inches. So what we're doing to the StarCraft today is we're going to try and get the sheeting on top. But before we do that, because the initial plan is to take the furniture and the fencing from the tracker and put it on the StarCraft. But we ran into a little bit of a dilemma. The fencing on the Star or on the tracker goes 20 feet back. So there's straight up 20 feet of deck space on the tracker. And on the StarCraft, we don't have 20 feet of deck space. We have about 19 and some change because the motor mount comes in kind of that older antiquated style where you would box around the motor mount. So what we have to do is we're adding a beefy aluminum cross member, some two inch, uh, quarter inch thick wall cross member of aluminum here. And we're gonna slide this whole motor mount back 16 inches before we get the decking on. That's gonna allow us to use that exact same fence from the tracker and it will mirror perfectly onto here. And then hopefully getting the sheeting on this pontoon before the end of day. So tomorrow we can have all day to do the carpet, the wiring, furniture and fencing. And we're gonna try and knock out this StarCraft build in two to three days. So we got a lot of work to do. Let's get rolling.
So as you can see, we've got a 5 8 stainless steel bolt and it's got the uh, grabber head on it. And then we're using a nylon nut with a marine washer, uh, driveling the pilot hole on the top big enough we can get a socket through there. And then we're sandwiching it down through the bottom of the channel so that we've got a really sturdy rear beam to mount that pod to. We're gonna be sliding this pod back 14 inches and then rehanging the motor. So I really think that that's going to give us enough beef to do that. We're still going to have, I think, at least three cross members to bolt to, which is basically what it had before. So we were able to get that back cross member mounted and slid the motor mount back about 14 inches, like my dad said. We then remounted the 75 horse Merc and cleaned all these cross members. We were using a torch and a putty knife to get all this old. Uh, tar off then we went over it with a die grinder to clean up all of the metal so it would adhere to the new tar tape So this is us cleaning all these cross members. It was a pain It took forever and it was freezing cold outside We then laid out all of the sheeting. This is marine grade plywood, but we wanted to seal it anyways We decided to seal it But while we were waiting for the sealer to thaw out because it was a little bit frozen We decided to start taking the fencing and furniture off of the tracker so we kind of divided and conquered here. My dad stayed on the tracker working on the furniture and I started sealing uh, the underside of the StarCraft, the new plywood for that. So I did three pretty heavy coats of this sealer, this waterproofing sealer slash stain. And my dad kept working on the tracker, getting it all torn down and ready to rock and roll. Once the sealer dried for a few hours, we began flipping over the sheeting and screwing it in. We were using some heavy duty stainless steel self tappers into these cross members. My buddy's dad, Andy, came over. He's a really smart guy as well and he was giving us his two cents. He is a longtime pontoon owner, so he wanted to come check out these pontoons before they completely transformed. So we were screwing all these down. We did all the edges and we're trying to line up the plywood so it was perfectly flush. And then we went across and laid out a chalk line, both horizontally and vertically, to space out the screws evenly across the sheeting. And once we got all of it screwed down to where we liked it, we decided we better put a tarp over the top of this thing because a big storm was blowing in and we did not want this plywood exposed to snow. So we wrapped it up, put a tarp on it, and we are heading to the shop in the morning. What's going on guys? We are back down here at the shop. This is day three of this boat build. A day where we're going to glue down the carpet. We got my dad and his friend Brett. We're at their shop and we're gonna glue down some carpet. So they're gracious enough to let us come down here in a heated shop because I don't know if you can hear, but it's extremely windy and stormy outside. So the goal today is to glue and carpet the StarCraft and lift this off this trailer so tomorrow we can bring down the tracker and swap trailers. So that's the goal today. And then we have some parts from pontoonstuff.com for the tracker that we're gonna try and inventory and lay out and make sure we have everything so we can finish that, that build up uh, in the next week or so. So that's where we're at. Let's get this deck cleaned off, prepped and ready for carpet.
put the carpet down on top of the deck that we put on yesterday. So we've got uh, treated plywood that we uh, screwed down and then we just applied the adhesive and the indoor outdoor carpet and Matt and I just rolled it all out and smoothed it all out and then Matt stapled all the edges as I trimmed it and I think it turned out really really nice. I think uh, all the furniture off the tracker will transfer over on this nicely and it's going to look really good and be a really good boat for somebody. So we're excited. We left the StarCraft in the shop overnight to let the glue set up. Back up at my house, as you can see we got quite a bit of snow, I continued to take off the fencing and furniture that my dad started the other day. Once the fencing and furniture were off the tracker, we hooked it up to the truck and drove it down to the shop. Our next task is swapping the trailers. The StarCraft trailer under this tracker and the tracker trailer under the StarCraft. Well, with the help of a two post lift at my dad's shop, this job went a lot easier than I thought. I was actually super nervous about lifting these things up and swapping the trailers, but it all went flawlessly. After that, took the StarCraft back up to my house and with the help of my wife, we were able to load the furniture from the tracker onto the StarCraft. Got the trim pieces put up and the fencing all aligned the way I like it. I then aligned the back of the deck with the back of the fencing since they both had straight lines I could measure off of. Then went around and drilled and put through bolts and the risers around the entire fence, getting this fence totally installed and ready to mount the furniture. This job can be a little tedious. Running stainless through bolts, lock nuts, and washers through every 8 or 10 inches of the bottom of this fence can take a little bit of time. But I am still in shock at just how easy it is to work on these pontoons. Well, that does it for this episode. Make sure you tune back in next week as we start to tear down the tracker pontoon 